Hi, so welcome back to my channel. This is your girl Sharon, aka The Melanin Nostalgic Runner. And this is a Get Fit With Me series presents accountability. And we are continuing off on me showing you stretches on what I would do and what I am doing <laughs> moving forward for pre-workouts for running. Um, because I've been, I think I've been very, very public about how I have a lot of Achilles issues and feet issues and have for years now. Even when I first became a runner, it's been an issue, but I've always just worked through it and done some preventive exercises to not make things worse and, you know, take the proper rest and all that good stuff. So, but what also the other thing I do is an older you get, you gotta stretch before you work out. You gotta warm up before you work out. Like, I don't care how athletic you are, that kind of thing's undefeated. Just saying. And this is me personally, with the personal experience to realize, oh yeah, yeah, that's a thing. Because in my 20s, I could get away doing way more than what I get away with now. And even yesterday when I ran, that was kind of, I had a little bit of a reality check when it came to that. I was like, girl, you don't cut it out. <laughs> but anyway, let me show you some more poses or some more um, stretches with your feet to help get you right for your walk, run, or just going out throughout the day. And these are chair specific stretches. So it's highly recommended to either be in a chair or you can even be on a couch doesn't matter. And then um, I don't think in this one, you could, if you want, have a resistance band. Because if you want to do some of the poses that we did in the previous video, instead of like being all the way on the floor, if that's not in your ministry and you can't really get on the floor like that, you could do a lot of what we did in the previous video on in, in, in a chair. So if you're going to do that, yes have your resistance band ready or um yoga strap ready whichever one you have and let's go all right so got my chair here <laughs> and so one of the things i like to do that's a pretty easy one to do is just circle rotations And I like doing this because this is a temperature check of how well your ankles are doing or not doing. Because <laughs> ideally, if you have a proper range of motion, what you're doing on one side should be the same as what you're being able to do on the left side. And again, I forgot to mention in the intro, this is gonna be more dynamic stretching I'm showing. I can also then show some stack stretching because some of these moves can be really constituted as both. It's just whether you're holding poses and versus doing warm ups. And see, as you can tell here for me, <laughs> my right and left are not the same, and no one's is, by the way, but this side will forever be my problem side, <laughs> which is nuts. Like even with the broken toe, this was still the problem side. So I was like, oh, that's the wrong side for that to have happened with. But anyway, <laughs> I'm getting distracted. So the next thing you want to do here is, um, this is if you're really struggling and lately I have been, and I also like to do this after I work out, but instead I do this in the Epsom salt bath because <laughs> I will do alphabet. And you can also do this right when you wake up in your bed before you get up. Um, the alphabet. This is great for your ankles. Like awesome. Because <laughs> it also lets you know if your um, range of motion is doing okay or not. 
I don't go through the whole entire alphabet. I guess I could and should, but I rarely do. I kind of go the best I can because I know my range of motion, particularly with this left side, just is not there. It hasn't been in, I don't even know if I've ever had proper range of motion with my left side. My left side has just always been a, such a problem. Um, even when I fall, like when I bike ride and I fall, I always try to make my left side take it. <laughs> Cause I just like, no, I want the strong side to stay there. <laughs> I know it's horrible, but. Anyway, I, I went to, I got to J for both of them, but the, you get the idea. That's another good exercise for your feet is definitely to do the alphabets. And by the way, please don't zoom in my feet because my feet are looking gnarly because of running. And also too, it's the winter months and I need to moisturize my feet and I haven't gotten around to doing that yet because I know I, I'm gonna work out. So the next thing that you see I'm doing and this one I will also show in standing, um, but I would say you want to work your way to this is heel raises. So this is where you're raising. Um, this is also really good to help with your arches because I know this side, my arch is like so mad and I want it to loosen up so badly. <laughs> And then the opposite is, you know, foot raises or toe raises. And so alternative for both of these is standing and doing this. And um, also in both alternatives, if you want to bump it up even another notch, you could do walk in the toe raises. So like pretending you're basically walking in stilettos for a little bit, but don't actually put the stilettos on because we're not trying to break your ankles, <laughs> but just kind of like, I would say high heels. Let's, let's say high heels. Let's not say stilettos, high heels. Cause that would defeat the whole entire purpose of all the stretching. Um, and then the opposite is to do a similar thing where you're walking like this, but that's more advanced and depending on how much of a stretch you can handle and how strong or how much stronger your feet are because because if your feet are super super weak i would not start with that <laughs> all right so then so another alternative is to do these the rotations um now you saw I was doing the rotations just kind of on their own, like the alphabets. This to me, I feel like is a little bit better where you do a one-on-one -on -one and you have your leg crossed like this <clears throat> because you're not just working your ankles or, you know, this area. You're also here giving the calves a warm up too. So this is nice for that. And you can literally feel your whole entire like leg from here to here getting some work done before you work out. And then this is also where you could just kind of do a little bit of this. Oh, which this particular thing feels awesome and lets you know if you have shin splint issues or not, because man, I felt that right away. Because I also am someone who's notorious for getting shin splints. <laughs> but I really only get the shin splints during long, long endurance runs, like a 50 miler. <laughs> or like um, if I should have retired my running shoes sooner than I have. So. Also, another thing, those who don't even run, because I know this is really not as much of a thing for those who don't run. So I'm going to give you a PSA. Please, 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 please. When your shoes start to wear and you're using those as your walking shoes, replace them. You're hurt. You're actually physically hurting yourself more than you realize 
uh, using shoes that um, are worn, like very, very worn. It's not a vanity thing. It's really more or less the way the shoes are built. Shoes are built for their maximum capacity during a certain time. And then when once the shoes are starting to wear, now you're doing some damage. Now for runners, we feel it a lot more because we're doing heavy impact, but let's not get it twisted because I run and walk. I do both because um, that's kind of the main ingredients for when you do go into ultras, you, you do both. Um, once you realize what it feels like when you're sh when you need to retire your shoes, you're going to not do that even when it comes to walking shoes. Or if you're someone who has a standing job, it shoes without support. I'm telling you, you're doing yourself a disservice. And it's not just your feet and your legs. You're going to fill in your back and everywhere else. That's my PSA. <laughs> All right. Then I'm just going to do this on this side because I haven't really I was rambling a little bit here. Oh my gosh, my range. I just know my range of motion is so not good right now. Ooh. All right. Trying to do this one just as long. I just really wish this would just pop, but in a good way, not in a bad way. I don't want it to pop in a bad way. Because I will say this, I know I have tension because I've been getting, I am, I've been getting worked on for, I would say since probably September, October, even sooner than that. And I can tell that this ankle, because when I touch it, it's tender. This ankle's so sore. And it's because she was working on it, my lady I go to, but there's so much tension in it. So she was trying to get it out, but like, man, she was being ambitious about trying to get it out and it was not going anywhere. This side, I don't feel it. It's not so bad because this is not my problem side. This side, oh man, it is so mad. And it's like right in here. It's right in this area. And I don't know what to do to, other than what I'm doing right now. It's really nothing else I could do to help release it. Oh, it's really so bad. Okay. Hmm. All right. That does conclude the warm up. I am about to go on to doing a run. And uh, yeah, I will talk to you later. Bye.